So, thank you very much for the introduction. I'm afraid I didn't understand uh, a lot about my name, so, and I'm very happy to be here and to have the opportunity to talk to you about what we do. So, after Renata's very profound analysis, I'm afraid I will just be a small add-on, but from a different perspective, so from an editor's per perspective. So, what we do and can do to move books, um, I think this is a very big and immeasurable question and I'm not sure if I can offer a proper or in very innovative answer. I think every editor and every publisher is probably struggling with this question over and over again and once in a while and I think on the other hand it's uh, what makes our job so appealing. So, we always try to find the best measures and the best um, placement for this particular book. And you all know there are a lot of books and there's a, a lot of um, competition on the market. So it's um, a beautiful work to try to find or to, to place a book and make it move in, in translation on another market and so. Um, I will just briefly introduce my publishing house. Uh, it's not my publishing house, but where I work for a very long time. <laughs> um, it's one of um, Germany's um, best known independent publishers of literature and humanities in Germany. It was founded shortly after World War II by Peter Surkamp, um, at that time still with American permission, uh, one of the first publishers who got this permission to found a publishing house. And we have uh, since then been publishing literature and humanities for decades. We have a very huge backlist and we started with Hermann Hesse and Bertolt Brecht. We are also the publisher of Peter Handke, as you might know. Um, during the years we have expanded our segments, we used to be quite strictly in earlier times and we do now also publish crime novels and have started to publish children's books very recently. And the children's books uh, sell quite good, especially during Corona because all the parents uh, were in the chaos of lockdowns and homeschooling and wanted to at least um, give their children new reading experiences. So this is a growing segment for us. For other segments, it's much more difficult at the moment. We publish about 400 to 500 books a year. Um, we have two programs, a fall and a spring program, like many of you do too, I, I guess. Um, and this contains the literary and the academic program by Zurkamp, paperback series, a hardback modern classic series and popular nonfiction. And we do also have um, Insel Verlag, and uh, where we publish mainly upmarket commercial fiction. So we have um, a division of our segments. Um, the international literature department, so the, what is most important um, and maybe most interesting for you, um, consists of um, six or seven editors. And um, around eight to ten titles appear in Zurkamp's literary main program half a year, so like approximately 20 titles a year, which is not so much. And um, we do cover all possible languages, so of course um, English and American, French, Italian, Spanish, Dutch, Japanese, Korean, Chinese. So you can, can guess that the, the space for, for titles is very small. In addition, there are about five to seven titles in the um, Bibliothèque Zurkam. This is our series of modern classics, which Okay. Um, which also contains Eastern and Southeastern European titles. Um, by Eastern and Southeastern European countries, I mean a pretty wide range of languages and literatures. Uh, we have a strong Polish list, a strong Hungarian and Ukrainian list, but we do also publish Russian literature, Slovenian, Czech, Georgian, Bosnian, Macedonian and Lithuanian languages. Um, our intention is always not to publish a book from a special language, but we, we fall in love with the book and we want to publish it, and then it happens that it is from Serbian language or from Georgian or from Russian. Uh, for Serbian literature, uh, one could still hope for more in our program, um, to put it like this, so there's still some, some space and I'm very open to recommendations and suggestions. One of the last titles we have published from Serbian literature was by Milovan Danojlic. And we have at least one title by Ivo Andrić, uh, Prokleta Avlia in <laughs> Bibliothek Zukam. 
Uh, we have published Milos Czerniansky uh, years ago. Uh, we have published a few books by Bora Czosic, who is with the Schaeffling Verlag now, and this wonderful book by Barbie Markovic, uh, who writes now in German. So, and what we do when we search for new authors, let's try. The most important thing in the beginning is uh, to know your field, or at least to try to know your field. Um, so we check the important national and international literary prizes, um, long lists and short lists, and we are always happy if publishers inform us about what is going to be on, on the short list, if they know, for example. We do check bestseller lists. Uh, we try to keep up with this particular book everybody is talking about. Um, of course, very important are uh, book fairs, so uh, meeting with publishers, agents and translators. And especially translators, um, I totally agree with Renata, are extremely important for us in, in the publishing houses um, when it comes to discovering new authors and titles because they know a lot about the, the scene, the literary scene, what is going on, they know the context. And we work very closely with a small pool of translators and we work together for years and years in the best case. And in, in this best case, there's a lot of trust and understanding so you don't have to spend many words, you know what this person likes and why she recommends this or that. And this is a very helpful and fruitful constellation for us and the editors. And then, of course, um, of growing importance is social media. So we follow the authors we like, and we follow the author authors which they like, and so on. And that is an easy way to grasp names and, and titles and to see what is going on. And especially um, in, in, in Germany, the, the space for literary criticism is being re reduced. And so Bookstagram and literary influencers are of growing importance for us. I think it might be the same on the Serbian market as well. Then we, of course, um, search for specific topics or plots sometimes. Um, this might be something specific historically or contemporary uh, that could shed a new light on German debate. So we always try to, to fit in a book in a, in a wider or broader discussion so that there's going to be some resonance. Um, at the moment, for example, these are perspectives on feminism, relationships, racism, patriarchy, and so on. But this is not the most important thing, at least not for me in the first place, uh, since these debates might be very different and sometimes seem untransferable. Um, not so much for me, but especially for people who have a stronger focus on American debates, and this is what sets the notion of progress. progress. And uh, plots, uh, th this is always good to have, but we rarely decide for a book because it deals with this or that. Um, for us, the outstanding and unique literary approach to tell a story and how it is, is done is important and even more important than what actually might happen in the book sometimes. So next week there will be released a, Russian transla a translation from the Russian language and honestly nothing ever happens in this book uh, except for a family having the flu and I had a hard time when I had to talk about or introduce this book to our distribution guys because what can I tell if nothing ever happens in this book so um, and then the nucleus of everything is a uh, personal interests and idiosyncras idiosyncrasies so if we read something may it be a sample translation or if I can read the language and read the whole book and then you have this this spark and this is the nucleus of everything and for the development of a title and for the decision for a title of course how we choose our titles um, as i said the the first at first is a positive impression or fascination and this is based on a sample translation in most cases or own reading of the original and so the, I can highlight that uh, sample translations are really a very very good thing to get a first impression to get a glimpse and then if if we have a, the spark of interest and we like it and we want to know what's going on then we issue readers reports so we have our readers these are mostly translators but sometimes journalists also who know the area well and they will review the book 
and sometimes we will issue a, a bigger sample translation if there's none. This is uh, very important to convince my colleagues who can't read Russian or any other Eastern or Southeastern European language, and they are the first ones I have to convince in the publishing house. And we also do talk to the translators or other international editors who have acquired the rights or considered to do so. So it's very good to be in touch with as many people as possible about a particular book. And then we come to the internal discussion of a title. So um, can this title convince the majority of the group and why? And what is the unique selling point, to put it like this, so it sounds a little bit technical, but in the end you have to, to pitch a book in, the, in this group for the first time, and this is the first test if it will succeed or not. We also talk about how it is done and what, what this, this special literary approach is. We talk about the expected sales figures um, and about other financial aspects. Um, we look at preliminary calculations. We talk about the possibilities for translation funding. And Zucamp is a publishing house. If we decide for a title, we will do it independently even if we don't get um, translation funding. But at the moment, with the exploding paper prices and production prices, the, the economic pressure on the titles is growing, so translation funding is always very welcome. Then we have to find the best place for the title within our program, so in some cases this is very clear, but sometimes it might be as well a title for the main program or for the paperback, and then you have to to talk about where it might fit better and where it can reach a wider audience. And of course, we talk a lot about um, perspectives. So is the author working on something new? Is there a backlist we could uh, proceed with? Um, could we possibly proceed with his or her work if she's writing something new? Um, can we establish him or her as a distinct voice? So we are not interested in publishing just one book by one author and then doing like this, but we try to curate a program and we try to find those voices who will have to tell something for us in the future. And then of course we talk about marketing ideas, so social media campaigns, readings and festivals, but this is the next step then. I have a small real life example. You might be familiar with uh, Romana Bujarowska and her um, Moyot Marsh in Macedonian, my husband. So this was a case where we definitely made a book from the Balkans moving um, in for the German market with a special thanks to Traduki who made one of the short stories into a small illustrated movie, so made it move literally. And this is a case, um, I was invited for a um, fellowship in Skopje. We met uh, in Skopje 2018 and we went for a beer. And then I met her in Croatia in 2019. And then I saw her reading in, in one of these literary events and I was very impressed by her performance and how the audience reacted and, I, and you could just feel the, the atmosphere. And then I asked her to send me something and she sent me some English translations and then Everyone liked it at the publishing house and we acquired the, the rights. And then we published the first edition in the main literary program in March 2021, uh, and a second edition in November 21, and a paperback edition in June this year. So this is quite a success for an unknown, or in Germany, unknown author. And publishers always say, ah, oh, short stories don't sell. But this was a, we, we proved otherwise. <laughs> I'm very happy. And the book uh, received broad attention, so we ha had reviews in various major newspapers and magazines like Der Spiegel, Die Zeit, Die Welt, NZZ, as well as in smaller local newspapers, so it was very broad um, attention. And she had readings at the International Literatur Festival in Berlin and in other cities, but of course it was still pandemic time, so I think it would have been very good if she could have been invited to more events, of course. Um, on the one hand, the book had already been a great success, especially in the region, and in, uh, there are a lot of translations, or had been, but this, the project had all ingredients of a project where the publisher waves and says, um, please, no, uh, short stories don't sell, especially from an unknown author from a small country. 
and the opposite happened and uh, since there's such a lack of northern Macedonian authors um, everyone was very interested and uh, the book caused a lot of interest so it was good for us um, and also there were fears that the debate or the perspective on feminism um, and patriarchy might have been too different from the German debate, but it was not, and was received very well and with great interest. Um, but the difficulty, of course, is always that this is not so predictable. So I'm just very briefly, um, some, some measures or things you could do as a, as a publisher to approach to uh, foreign publishers. I think Renata has mentioned uh, everything already, so. <laughs> I will make it very briefly. So the first thing, of course, is uh, visiting book fairs. That's the classic, um, the best opportunity to meet at least once a year. Um, it is very helpful to stay in touch and it is very necessary to stay in touch. So I think this is one lesson we learned uh, from the pandemic that uh, it is very good to have some real face-to-face -face time once in a while at least. And there are various uh, opportunities. So you have the, the big fairs in Frankfurt and, Leip uh, and Leipzig and London, Bologna and a lot of other book fairs. Then inviting guests to your festivals, for example, to Crocodile or so, you could organize some, like a, like a visiting program or so, on, because this is a very good opportunity to get together in a relaxed and very inspiring atmosphere to meet with authors, hear the readings, visit literary events. And it's always very helpful if the atmosphere is quite informal to get in touch. Then organizing fellowships, um, as Nina <laughs> has already done so. Um, I think this is a very good opportunity to build strong and lasting networks and a better understanding. So f for the inviting people, they get to know the, the editors and publishers better. And the editors and publishers have the opportunity to stroll through the bookstores and take the books into a hand, and this is very, very important. Then translation funding programs, always very welcome, as I already mentioned. And then I think maybe the most important thing is uh, promoting your language. So um, investing in sample translations, but also investing in, in the future of translators and younger professionals. So you could organize uh, translator workshops for younger professionals and beginners, like uh, Slovenia does. Um, Latvia did the same. They invited a group of editors and publishers, and at the same time, they had a workshop for people who translated from Latvian into German. And this was a perfect opportunity also for the editors to meet with the translators, because no one knows Latvian translators. I think there are one or two, and this is a very good opportunity to, to meet and to build something. And I know it's, it's unfair, but smaller languages have to do more efforts in, in these things. I mean, everyone can speak some English, or many spe people speak French and so, but for the smaller languages, this is a very heavy step to, to take. And then there are these established three to five translators and they translate everything and if they are busy then you have to wait as a publisher and then they get older and then there can occur this gap so you have these young quirky titles and the, the old giants who translate. And I don't want to say that older translators can't translate young literature, not at all, but I think it's good to, to promote the, the youngers as well. And uh, maybe the last thing is um, if you conclude contracts with your authors, then think of selling the rights immediately with. So um, it is very helpful if you have a, a long copyright term, so not just five or seven years, but because it's a very slow business, you know, uh, publishing takes time. So we plan like for the next two years and so on, and then the book will only appear and then we need time. To, to promote the book and it is not done with only one book but maybe you have to try again with the next book and it, it's just a matter of growing very slowly the attention in most cases so, so um, patience and long contracts are very helpful I think <laughs> and please bear with us if you send us things and we are too slow to respond we, we do read but sometimes it's just uh, <laughs> overwhelming 
So this is it. Thank you very much. Thank you, Janika. Please do sit down in the case that we have a questions from the side of your publishers. Dakle, ako imate... Dobro, a posle vesno nešto i ako hoćete da... Hi, I have a question. Um, I'm here as the representative of our Association of Literary Translators and as such, I am interested in uh, how much uh, does talking to translators affect uh, your choice of titles to publish? Or rather, if you have uh, translators that you've cooperated with before from small languages, for example, if they are in touch with the literature that they are translating, the language they are translating from, would you maybe, based on previous cooperation, take into consideration something that they recommend to you? Thank you. Uh, thank you. Yeah, I think we would, but uh, um, I think, the, to be honest, it's, uh, we have this, this pool of translators and it's very hard to get into this. But of course, if there's an interesting project and um, a, a good sample translation, then this is, there's nothing against uh, that we could uh, do this. Yes, my, my question was about translators that you have cooperated with in the past. So somebody that you have already built trust with and uh, like cooperation, that, that type of um, recommendation. Yeah, as I, as I said, they are the most, maybe the most important uh, persons in this process. So we love the publishers who send us things, but um, of course the, the discussion with the translator is uh, very necessary and very important because they, they know how the German market will function and might react to the thing. They, they know about the difficulties. And of course publishers do pitch their titles and maybe don't speak about the weaker passages or something like this. And so the, the translators with whom we have worked already together with whom there's, there's a trustful cooperation, then you can speak very frankly and look at the book from, from every aspect. Of course, yes, thank you very much. Sorry. So I just wanted a brief um, explanation. Uh, you said that you have in uh, in Zurkam you have um, uh, international department, but editors work in, in your apartment, not agents. How do you kind of how do you separate your editing work from uh, agent work? Um, I know. Co sorry to interrupt. I know colleagues uh, with whom I'm only corresponding. Uh, uh, to matters uh, about uh, foreign rights, so I'm curious, how do you separate everything? Yeah, this is separated at Zurkam. So we have the editorial department and we do the acquiring. And we have a foreign rights department, who, or a rights and foreign rights department. They do the contracts with the authors and translators and contributors and they also sell the rights. So, but, but in advance of book fairs, and so we, we all meet and talk about trends we see on the markets and, and stuff like this, but they, they are in connection with the publishers to sell the rights. This is not something we do. Okay, so you work in editorial department, but international editorial department, right? If I understood well. Yeah, it's just, it's apart from the editorial department. So we have German literature, we have international literature. So this is, this is the editorial department and academic and non-fiction and stuff like this. And then there's the rights department, which is a total different thing. Yeah, that's also interesting because we don't have, usually don't have that kind of um, hierarchy here. Yeah, I think Thank it depends from publishing house to publishing house. So if there's a smaller publishing house, this might be in one hand, for example, or so. But this is just, we, we are like 110 people or so, so this is all separated. Thank you.